my name is Jackie Lee Price and I am joined this evening with two, two belt holding, a two belt holding, Jem Campbell. <laughs> How are you doing? Hey, I'm good, you alright? Yes I am, I am. Have you got enough space for all those belts? I'm, try I'm trying to, trying to get <laughs> So first and foremost, congratulations. You are now the, uh, yesterday you entered the finals of the uh, Ingham Bo Boxing, Ingham Boxing National Championships, under 64 kilograms, and the new! Yep. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good to be uh, two times elite champion, I must admit. Yeah, it feels really good. Two times. Indeed. <laughs> Two times. Let's have a look at the belt. First and foremost, let's have a little look at the belt. You've got to move it, I think, oh. slightly. Yeah. Nice this year, aren't they? Yeah, nice. It is nice, yeah. So that's this year's. And then... Yeah, but still, still good. All good. Still good. Yep. So did you ever imagine when you first started boxing that you would become a two-time two weight national champion that sounds good doesn't it it does sound good i mean i didn't imagine it would come true i had that's what i had my plans on because um i'm very uh you know dedicated and uh, very motivated and i'm always uh, you know aspiring to achieve things so when i when i started boxing that was the plan to become you know national champion and to uh, you know and some but um yeah so i'm yeah just thrilled that i managed to achieve that to be fair Absolutely brilliant. So firstly, like I say, congratulations. And you fought yesterday against Sarah Dunn. Um, she is a veteran, which I mentioned yesterday, excuse me. She is a veteran. Um, she's been around a really long, long time. Um, I don't know if she disappeared, came back. But listen, uh, you handled business yesterday. You handled business. Have you had a chance to have a little look back and uh, how do you feel about your performance? Yeah, I had a chance to watch it back. Um, at the time, I... It was a bit disappointed. I, I boxed really well in the quarterfinals and the semifinals, and I knew that if I, you know, carried on performing like that, then I'd have a, you know, a really good chance of um, when I knew I was going to be up against a, a tough opponent. And I needed to perform well. Uh, I didn't perform as well as I would have liked to have done. I know I can box better, um, but yeah, watching back, I know that I, I did enough. I think first and third round, uh, I was uh, strong and uh, and and kind of you know, leading it, uh, probably let her come back in in the second round and stuff. And yeah, and probably uh, let myself fall into her kind of way of boxing, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I'm happy to have got the, uh, got the win. To be honest, I said this earlier on to someone, when you say, how did you box? Everyone goes, oh, it's terrible. Oh, wish. Listen, to be fair, I haven't seen your quarterfinal fight. But I'm sure it was great. But this, this fight was good. It was really, really good. And to be fair, what I'm saying to everybody is, you know, I really do uh, commend all of you for having that time off with the pandemic, not knowing whether you're coming or going and coming back and performing. And actually, um, you did some beautiful long-range work. I love to see that long-range boxing. And especially behind the jab. And those one-twos were on the, the button. They were really on the button. I mean, your timing is uh, it's still there, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've worked hard during the pandemic. I tried to really keep a good, like, base level of fitness and stuff because I knew at some point we were going to be up and up and going again. And I, and 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 being a little bit older, also, I know that you know I I needed to stay, you know, relatively in good shape because it's just going to be so much harder to come back. So I I've worked hard during the pandemic to maintain as much as I could so that when we could just get back sparring again, I could work on that kind of sharpness and that, you know, and that speed and that timing that you know, is the, is the main thing, really. But you need that good foundation that I tried to keep as, as good as I could. Yeah. To be fair, I mean, the people talk about ring rust. And I didn't really see a lot of ring rust with you. And now you're s saying that, you you know, you did put the work in um, during the pandemic. But, you know, was it mentally difficult? I mean, were you training on your own or did you have, you know, partners to train with or how did that work? I did it all on my own. It, it was tough. Like um, I, I live in a flat. I've got not got a lot of space, no garden. Um, so I was out running. I was at the park, shadow boxing and skipping, and um, and I was training on my own because I don't I don't live in London where all the all my teammates were. So yeah, um, you know I'm an, I'm an hour from there or so. So I was I was training, training on my own to be fair. Um, so yeah, it, it was uh, it was tough. But you know you just you make the most of what you've got and. Uh, yeah, and 
that seemed to work for me. So, you know, I, I made it work and as good as I could do, basically. That's brilliant. I just had a vision of you shadow boxing in the country. Because <laughs> they're used to madness here, aren't they? <laughs> I had a few fans walking their dogs seeing me every morning. Morning, Jim. <laughs> Do <Yeah>. again? <laughs> That's brilliant, actually. It's really good. And you were uh, you dropped down a weight, a significant amount of weight. I mean, you boxed at 69. We talked about you winning a, a belt before. Um, you, you won that at 60, under 69, I should say, and now you're at under 64. So firstly, why make the change? And secondly, do you think that that had any bearing on your performance at all? Or did, you know, did it hinder it or was it better? How did it work? Um, I was always quite light for 69. So I'd always um, come in a couple of kilos under anyway, quite comfortably. So I felt like I was giving a little bit away. I mean, I had the height and stuff, but I might not have had enough kind of strength at that weight. So... Um, and then I knew that the new categories were coming in for 66 as of next year. So I was like, oh, you know, let's start to kind of get get down towards that weight and just kind of see how it goes so that I can, you know, maintain it for, for next season, really. And then um, it all kind of went really well. And I was really consistent and really dedicated with the kind of nutrition plan and everything. And it just and I seemed to feel comfortable. And I was like, well, let's see. Let's see if I can do 64. And, and actually, yeah, I was still sharp and I was still quick and I still. Yes. Right? So I was actually like, let's go for 64, really. So. It, it wasn't really my intention initially, but it then seemed to work. So, and it was, this was always going to be maybe a test of this year to see, you know, what I do next year, basically. So, yeah. It's brilliant, actually. I mean, in the, in the first round, definitely that you, um, you know, you put on the pressure, there was lots of flurries of beautiful straight shots and actually they were snappy. Uh, you seem to have loads and loads of, you know, energy in the tank, which, so when I heard, I'm going to be honest with you, when I heard you were 64, I was like, 64 <laughs> but to be fair suits you perfectly doesn't it i mean i even weighed it at 63 so it was like, oh, don't show off <laughs> yeah i felt i felt good i mean like it, I, I was nervous so there was a lot i i feel a little bit less energy like maybe in the finals and what i felt in the in the quarters and the semis maybe because obviously you've got there's more at stake and you know more hype and everything to it so you're gonna have more nerves and stuff but yeah i felt good and I don't think I ever really have a problem with my kind of fitness. I work really hard on that and run regularly. So, it, you know, that kind of, that shows and I need that kind of fitness for the type of box that I am, you know, because um, I need to be moving and, and quick and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I do need that fitness. So, um, yeah, I felt like, yeah, I, I demonstrated that. So, yeah. Do you know what's nice? So I remember meeting you at Islington, right? And you were not very confident about your ability. And... You've always kind of underplayed it. And what is really nice to see is how you've developed over the last, what, four or five years. Uh, am I aging you up? Or it's probably about that length of time, is it not? Oh, I started at Islington in, in like about October 18. Oh, is it, is it only then? So it's only, I've only been... Because you were boxing somewhere else, but you, you, you didn't yeah. seem confident in your ability. But then... It's almost one of these female Clark Kent, if there's such a, such a thing. Outside of the ring, you're not very confident. And then when you get into the ring, you start smashing people up. And it is, in, a, in, the, in the best possible way, a, a great thing to see, that confidence grow. Yeah, I definitely am a lot more confident than what I was maybe when before, but you know, before and and I have developed as as the time's gone on. I think I think the the club and the coaches have just installed so much confidence in me, which has really helped me, um, you know, kind of display that myself as well. And and I think when you get the wins under your belt and stuff, you feel more confident in your ability as well. So that kind of helps, you know. I've I've got an, an incredible record of like since I've been at Islington, like yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I've only lost one bout. I've had 15 bouts. I've lost one bout since since October 18. So, you know, you, you can't not but take confidence from that, really. So I know that they were looking at you uh, quite quite quickly for GB at 69 kilos. Um, and I, I'm not quite sure what happened there. I don't know. Was it something to do with your job and you didn't really follow that up? And I'm guessing you've got another chance. Would you follow that? Or are you quite happy just to stay at, you know, just national level? I, I went to GB trials after on the back of the 19 elites. Yes. Uh, actually, I, did, I didn't make it onto the programme. Um, so, um, 
yeah, so I'm, I've got a, another opportunity now in January. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens at a slightly lighter weight. Um, all I can do is, is keep doing what I'm doing and just keep trying to improve on the, the points that they told me last time. Um, yeah, and just as long as I'm developing, um, yeah, and, uh, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, they see something in me and, uh, and yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm just enjoying my box at the moment, so yeah <laughs> what i was going to say though have, has your mindset changed since 2019 to now because i feel like it has but i don't want to put words into you so before you sort of turned up at gb back then did it feel a little bit like a like a i don't know just like oh my god this is a bit of a surprise and then now it's a completely different person would i be correct in thinking that yeah uh, yeah i suppose yeah the first time it's all new to you you don't really know what to expect it's a bit of a whirlwind you know i was saying that to my parents the other day i was like saying this feels different when it's the second time it's like the first time was just like in incredible do you know what i mean because like you know i suppose i wasn't expecting that maybe i was an underdog or you know and it, it was just surreal and then and this was amazing you know but you kind of already feel that little bit of pressure that actually you know I, I should be in the final and I've you know I've got the potential to win so there's kind of a different kind of feeling around it and and I suppose um yeah because I knew what happened last time you make a finalist you you know you get GB trials you know I'd kind of hadn't I'd kind of kind of forgotten about that actually if I'm honest I was just focusing on on kind of winning and and uh and then going from there in and I you know and then um yeah and then I was told obviously the the trials again in January so it's um yeah, kind of switch on again for that, really. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, so how are you going to spend your Christmas? Because I can imagine you can't really take your foot off the gas too much. And you've got some of these youngsters, not trying to say you're old, but there's quite a few young'uns. <laughs> you've got to show them. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. I, I know, I know, yeah. There's quite a few youngsters, and I'm, yeah, I'm definitely getting to the uh, the uh, the older end of uh, of the uh, spectrum, I suppose, at the moment. Um, like I'm going to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a break few days, you know, enjoy myself. And, uh, and then, you know, I, I'm always used to kind of, you know, training regularly and keeping kind of ticking over. So I will be still doing stuff over, over the Christmas um, um, period. And then, uh, yeah. So I'll be preparing uh, for January. <laughs> you put your eyes on the prize. Lastly, have you been watching any of the, um, obviously when the, you know, the pandemic happened and there was, you know, effectively amateur boxing had stopped and the gyms were closed did you take any notice of what was happening in the pro scene and how as in the female pro scene and how it's changed and has that inspired you in any way as a possible route yeah i mean the pro scene's gone gone boom hasn't it really during covid he has so many women have turned over uh, like it's great to see like so many women like doing well and the, the pro scene getting so, the, so much bigger for women's boxing it's um it's really good um if I'm honest, it's probably not something that really um, that really appeals to me. Really, um, particularly not at the moment. Um, I'm enjoying kind of amateur boxing. I I do it because I love doing it. Not not necessarily for kind of making any money from it. Really, not that not that that's the reason why people turn pro or anything. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying amateur boxing. Um, and um, yeah, I've I've got a I've got a good job as well that I enjoy. So um, yeah, it's not really on my radar at, at the moment. Really. That's fair enough. You've got the best of both worlds, though, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. I can do the job that I enjoy, and then I can train um, outside of that. So, yeah, I do have the best of both worlds. <laughs> well, I would call it distressing from the main job by bashing people up in the there, evening. There is that. Yeah, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, I am, honestly, I'm so happy to see the growth in you, the confidence in you, and... Um, I know there's loads more to come, Jen. Um, thank you very much for giving us your time. Thanks very much, Jackie. Thanks.